Good evening, Canton Township. I would like to call the Canton Township Board meeting to order on November 24th at 7 p.m. As this is the first meeting of the new Board of Trustees, Clerk Segris, as we take roll call, can we please have each board member state where you're calling from, so good, Canton, Michigan, and then give a small introduction of yourself to the people. So Clerk yes. Segris, please call the roll. All right, uh, Borninski. Uh, good evening, I'm Kate Borninski, and I am in my home in Canton Township, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm a newly elected board member. Excellent. Foster. Good evening, um, my name is Summer Foster, and I am at my home also in Canton Township, um, and I have been on the board for four years. Ganguly. Good evening, I'm Tanya Ganguly. I am calling from my home in Canton, Michigan. Um, I'm very happy to be newly elected to the current township board. Thank you. Uh, Graham Hudek. Uh, good evening, I'm here in Canton Township and I'm here now instead of as your trustee as uh, your elected supervisor. All right. Let the record reflect that Clerk Segris is in attendance. He is at his home in Canton Township. Uh, he is uh, passionately excited about his second term as clerk and is grateful to the residents of Canton Township for re-electing him. Slavens. Good evening, uh, Diane Slavens. I am in Canton Township Hall uh, in my office. And I'm uh, honored to observed one and now my second term as your township treasurer. And Snyderman. Good evening, I'm Stephen Snyderman. I am here in Canton Township. And, and first of all, I'm pleased to see that we're now saving the best for last. And uh, I, I will be the last one <laughs> called for the first time in my career. Um, and this is the beginning of my third term. So I guess that makes me the senior member of this board. So I wear that badge proudly. Um, but I'd also be a little remiss if I didn't know that it's a momentous evening tonight. The fact that we have a supervisor who also happens to be female a woman for the first time, I think, in the history of Canton Township. So congratulations, Anne-Marie. And also, I am also proud that I think for the first time, Michael and I are in the minority as men on this board. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have happened for the township as well. So congratulations to everyone sitting on the board tonight, and we look forward to working with the administrators who are here. So with that, I will say I am here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I now call for a motion to adopt the agenda with the addition of a small COVID-19 presentation, a resolution, and an RBA we will number G0. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the agenda as amended, adding a presentation of a COVID update from Director of Fire uh, Services, um, Stockline, a resolution <clears throat> for um, recognizing Native American Heritage Month and celebrating the heritages and cultures of Native Americans and the contributions of Native Americans to Canton Township. And finally, adding item G0, a request approval of contract with Comcast Enterprise Services for Internet Services. Support. Um, so, Clerk Segris, can we please have a roll call on the motion of adopting the agenda? Orninsky. Yes. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudek. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. I now call for a motion to approve the minutes of the November 10th meeting. Madam Supervisor, I would like to make a motion, if it would please you, to um, approve the 11. <coughs> 
10 2020 regular board meeting minutes with one modification. Uh, I would like to um, strike the word on, uh, on page six of your packet, item G3. I would like to strike the word FOT and have it read four. Uh, consider authorizing a budget amendment and purchase order for the Wayne County Health uh, Department drive through COVID-19 testing center. I would like to correct that typo if we could. Support. Okay, great. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of November 10. Clerk Seegers, can we please have a roll call to approve? Borninski. Yeah, uh, aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Seegers die. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. So the mo I'm, sorry, I'm still getting used to the order. I almost want to say aye after summer. Uh, the motion of approving the minutes of November 10th has passed. So now we have a call for public comments. Are there any non-agenda items that anyone would like to comment on? Do we see any hands from any of our attendees? Um, or if you're on a cell phone, you can press star nine. You can also type in the chat. Do you see any hands, Michael? I don't see. Oh. Let's see, yes, I don't see. I do see we have 12 right. participants, which is fantastic. Larger than a typical meeting. I do not see that anybody has indicated they would like to make a public comment. I received no public comment prior to the meeting and there's nothing in the chat or the Q and A. <clears throat> okay, great. So seeing no other public comments, can I get a motion to move to a short presentation from Director Stockholm oh. and Sorry. Madam so Supervisor, yes. may, I, may I make a motion that we first pay the bills? Support. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were going to do that after the resolution, but that's no problem. Um, sure. So we have a motion on the floor from Treasurer Slavens mm -hmm. to pay the bill and the support. Okay, Clerk Seegers, can we please have a roll call for those in favor of the motion? Orninski. Yes. <clears throat> Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Williams. Oh, Snyderman. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Probably. I'll say aye. So the motion is passed to pay the bills. Thank you. Um, so now we move, um, we're going to hear a motion to do hear a short presentation from Director Stockline and COVID-19. So uh, good evening. Um, <clears throat> I don't have so much of a presentation as more of an update. Um, so I know that um, we have a couple of new board members um, just to keep you updated. Um, the directors meet regularly, <clears throat> regular on a, a weekly basis and often several times a week um, just to um, go over the um, emergency orders um, from MDHHS and MIOSHA as they continue to change and evolve. Um, it's constantly being updated. We work with HR all the time in order to make sure that uh, we're keeping the employees and the public safe, um, as safe as we possibly can through the orders. Um, and that takes a lot of work uh, to continue that. Um, we have noticed that today um, was one of our worst days in Canton Township with uh, 64 confirmed cases today, matching um, the maximum um, if you per se with uh, Dearborn and Livonia, um, both having those same amount of numbers. So um, in the fire department, we continue to see these cases um, rise. We're, we're constantly going on them five, six, seven runs a day with um, confirmed or possibly um, COVID positive patients. And we continue to um, supply the employees with the proper PPE and the proper training in order to uh, make sure that they're safe um, and keeping our citizens safe at the same time. Um, as you know, um, we've taken steps in the past uh, week here to follow the emergency order and make sure that the township is um, following that, making sure that we are working from home when we can. Um, those employees that um, were able to um, be relocated to their homes um, 
the directors and, and um, HR have worked feverishly to try and get that IT needs met to make sure that we're um, supplying them with the computers and the technology at their house so that they can do those, those jobs from home. Um, we still have um, obviously public safety and some key personnel um, throughout the administration building that have to come in and um, have to be here at the office in order to make sure that uh, we continue on um, in our operations and to serve the public. Um, with that being said, um, we know that um, we've had some, um, some motions in the past uh, board meetings regarding testing sites that are coming to the township. Uh, we've had some more discussion over this past week about that testing site actually turning over into a vaccination site as we continue to see these vaccinations become available. Um, we know that um, we have some vaccinations that are coming out. You see the news, um, a couple of vaccinations that um, have already um, somewhat been approved and will be final, finalized um, this month and then another one finalized next month, uh, hopefully if everything goes well. Um, and that means that, that those supplements or those uh, vaccinations will continue to hit the market. And as they hit the market, it's all federally um, controlled. So we won't have any say in how much medications we get or how many vaccinations we get, but we know that we're going to be rolling into that vaccination um, site as well as the testing site. Um, so with that being said, we're re-evaluating re, um, the um, plan to have that down on Gettys Road, the testing site. And um, Will Hayes, our emergency manager, he's really um, taking the lead with the county, uh, making sure that we have the proper location that can uh, can serve the public. Um, we know that there's probably going to be about 17 sites um, throughout Wayne County. That means we're serving millions of people through 17 sites. So we know that it'll be busy. With that being said, we know that that uh, the rollout of the vaccination is not going to come all at one time. And there's going to have to be appointments and there's going to be um, organized chaos when this comes. Um, we're working through that and trying to get this figured out and how it's going to look. Um, Will was on several um, conference calls today um, going through the, um, the rollout of this and how, how it's going to look in the future. We know that healthcare workers from the news are going to be the first ones to receive that. Um, and then it's going to move into like FD and PD and critical workers um, through government and also um, in a final like first step of the phase. And that's all in the first phase, but they're doing it in separate steps. Um, we'll be doing the elderly um, 65 and older at that time as well. So um, we don't know all the details on that and we'll get those as we um, figure those out. But as far as um, updating you, you know that um, the team here has definitely been uh, working hard to make sure that we're um, on top of all the orders and making sure that we're gonna serve the public the best that we can. And we'll continue to do that throughout this crisis. And I'm assuming well into the spring and summertime of uh, 2021. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, insight on, on what's going on. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions or any of the directors that um, are also involved with this are happy to take any questions as far as that goes. Thank you. Are there any board this summer? Thank you, Chris, for the update. Um, Director Stockline. Um, can I know before you um, sent the board a map um, to show if there were clusters um of you know runs that you guys are doing for covid do you are you seeing any of those clusters and could you um send us another map like that if you are so we can see where the clusters are i can certainly do that we will get that together for you and get that out we do have um one of uptick in one of our um, senior residents or um, assisted living um, facilities um, we have been out there um, working out with them to update them on training protocols and with the state, um, showing them the best practices. So we will definitely get that out to you. I also um, have some more updates as they, as they come out. We'll make sure that we get them out to you. But um, I know that uh, we are seeing that uptick in certain, um, certain areas of the township. And um, also, how is, how is the Public Safety Department doing on PPE? I know that that was an issue before, making sure you had enough quantities well, as you know, we uh, did receive that grant for 206,000, if I'm not mistaken, 206 or 209,000, um, right in that uh, range there. So we have purchased the majority of that. I'm working with finance. Um, we're kind of looking at the RBA that we passed 
back in March to see if we need to bring that back to the board again in order to make these purchases for like our isolation suits and, and so forth uh, because it's a big $87,000 um, purchase, which we know is covered by the grant, but we still may have to get the grant, the board permission in order to, to purchase that again, depending on how we worded that back in March. But um, we're doing fairly well. Um, we're, we just received another 1,695 from the county last week. So that's um, helpful. Um, they're still distributing uh, PPE supplies to us. And I know that we can get that a lot uh, easier than what we could back in March. Um, we ordered like boot covers and so forth. Um, and we've already received some of that stuff just within a week. So we know it's a little easier to find that stuff. We're not having to uh, use every director's P card in order to get onto Amazon and, and find what we can do, you know, find what we could. Um, so it's, it's become a little bit more accessible through our, our normal suppliers, which has made it helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other, sorry, any other board questions? Hi, Director Stockline. Thank you for um, the update. I'm wondering, um, I, I think I heard you say that um, for the vaccination site that um, you would, it would be by appointments. And um, I think that is a great idea. Um, and also, um, I'm wondering, you, I think you were saying that um, you're looking at possibly moving the um, the testing and vaccination site to um, a, a different location than the location on Gettys Road. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and is that because you're anticipating um, more traffic or just trying to get more centrally located or? Um, it's kind of twofold. Yes, we are expecting more traffic with the testing rolling into the vaccination. We know that when that vaccination comes out, there'll be a big demand for that. Um, we don't know how many um, you know, actual vaccinations that the state of Michigan is gonna receive from the federal government at this point. Um, we have an idea of that, but um, as we work through that, that's one of, the, one of the logistical items that we're working with to make sure that we're not gonna be backing traffic up somewhere. We're working with um, MSD as well as police and everyone else to make sure that, it, and. Um, leisure services to make sure that we have those facilities ready. And then the other factor is, is that we have to make sure that these vaccinations are cooled. We know that this new vaccination has to be stored at a temperature of, I believe it's negative 27 degrees, right? So we have to be able to have a trailer there in order to store that, that medication. Um, and it has to be stored at that and given out within this 28 day period. So we know that these kind of things are in store for us. And this is all public information that we can see on the news, right? Um, but we know that these kind of logistics have to be taken into account when we're setting up these sites. Yeah, I, I just, I, I wanna commend you for um, thinking about all the logistics um, back in whenever it was 2009 when the H H1N1 flu um, was, uh, a pandemic. Um, my family and I participated in a vaccination clinic from the county health department, which was the only way we could get vaccinated at that time. And um, it was located up at Schoolcraft College and it was a huge line and a big traffic nightmare. Um, so I commend you for thinking about all these things ahead of time. So thank you. Thank you, and it will. It is a group effort. I mean, it's all of us that are working together to do that. Um, and we will, um, and in case you didn't know, we do have a, another pod set up at the high school. So there's gonna be actually two locations in the township that will most likely be working hand in hand. Um, and that really depends on how the county decides to designate those vaccinations if they wanna split it up. Um, last that I heard, um, you know, you can receive up to 5,000 vaccinations, but, um, I also heard that they, they may only be able to, you know, if they're going to start this in the healthcare facilities and they're going to roll it out into the, into these vaccination sites, um, that it's only possible to give up to 100 vaccinations a day because there's so much paperwork that goes into this. So it's, it's, a, it's a big process just to get one person vaccinated. So we'll definitely have some traffic issues if we don't do it by appointments. Thank you. Are there any other um, trustees, Tanya? Yeah, 
Thank you, Director Stockline, for the update. Um, I just had a question about the timeline. Is it going to uh, change because of uh, uh, incorporating the vaccination part of it? Um, how are you thinking about that and what is the plan for that? Well, um, as Director Holmberger can um, attest to, we're, we're kind of waiting on the county for some funding um, that we had approved in the other board meeting to make those improvements down on Gettys Road. What we met with the county today and we're working on reallocating those back to um, our new location and, and kind of switching that over. Our goal is to have this funding set up and the agreements signed with the, the uh, county within the next couple of weeks and get the testing site up and running. We want the testing site up and running as fast as possible. So our goal is within two to three weeks having that testing site up and running. And then at that point, as the vaccination rolls in, um, we, we can make that transition over to that. But most importantly, we gotta get the testing up and running so that we can get those numbers. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other board questions? Stephen? Yeah. Thanks, Emory. Um, thanks, uh, Director. Um, uh, of course, it's going to be pretty complicated because it's a it's a two shot vaccine, isn't that correct? So we're gonna also have to be coordinating that probably. I'm sure that'll add to the coordination of it all. Um, but the question I had for you was um, your staffing and, and how things are going in the department. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping that uh, we don't have a lot of um, employees, fire em employees that are have are out because of the illness and, um, and how has has your staffing been, has it been a struggle, a lot of overtime and things like that? Um, I can speak that our, our staff is doing very well. Um, they're dealing with it and um, they're troopers over there. They, they've really been stepped up for the challenge. Um, we have had, um, you know, a, um, a little extra overtime. Um, it's not anything that um, has concerned me with the budget at this point. Um, and we do have um, at this point one person that's out um, and we're, we're um, expecting him to be back shortly um, doing well and apparently um, you know this is going to continue on for several months right we we know that they have to have this endurance in them and then they continue to come to work every day positive they continue to to fight through this and we know that we'll uh, we'll make it through there and they they all um, they know that they have the support of you guys and that I think that that helps out a lot so other than that we're, we're doing well and we're, we're holding up all right thank you all right thank you appreciate what you and they all do for the community thank you any other board questions any other directors want to give comment? Do we have any public questions? Mr. Cougars, do you see any? I don't see any hands here. I see nothing. So. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for the update, Director Stockholm. Thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is a resolution. I call for a motion to read a resolution on Native American Heritage Month into the minutes. Uh, Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution recognizing Native American Heritage Month and celebrating the heritages of cultures of Native Americans and the contributions of Native Americans to Kent Township. Whereas the November 1, 2020 through November 30, uh, 2020, the United States celebrates National Native American Heritage Month, an opportunity to acknowledge the contributions of Native Americans to the history of the United States, whereas Native Americans have moving stories of tragedy, triumph, and perseverance to be shared with future generations, whereas Native Americans speak and preserve indigenous languages, which have contributed to the English language by being used as names of individuals and locations throughout the United States and Michigan, whereas the influence of the Iroquois Confederacy um, the founding fathers was instrumental in the drafting of the Constitution of the United States, which with the concepts of freedom of speech, separation of governmental powers, and system of checks and balances between the branches of government, whereas the state of Michigan derives its name from the Algonquin word Michigama, meaning great water, 
Whereas the land that is Canton Township was ceded to the United States on November 17, 1807, with the signing of the Treaty of Detroit between the United States and the Ottawa, Chippewa, Wyandotte, and Potawatomi Native American nations. Whereas Canton Township recognizes the presence of the three major groups in Michigan today, the Chippewa, Ottawa, and Potawatomi, who have lived upon this land since time immemorial and values the progress of our and values the progress our society has accomplished through Native American thought and culture. Whereas the Great Sauk Trail or Michigan Avenue, originally created by the migrating bison and mastodons, ran through uh, the southern portion of Canton, connecting Native tribes from the Mississippi River to Detroit. Whereas Tonquish Creek, which runs through Canton Township, is named after the Potawatomi chief whose band inhabited the lands prior to the United States settlements in the 1820s. Whereas the Potawatomi tribes in the Midwest were forcibly removed from the ancestral homeland by order of the U.S. government, resulting in the Potawatomi Trail of Death. Whereas Canton Township's history as the sweet corn capital of Michigan could not have been possible without the domestication and cultivation of wild corn by the Anishinaabe people. Whereas Canton Township was ground zero for the invasive emerald ash borer, which killed more than 14 million trees in the and the Saginaw Chippewa tribe has frozen more than 20,000 black ash seeds for a time when they can be safely planted to save their sacred tree. Whereas Canton Township has reason to honor the great achievements and contributions of Native Americans and their ancestors, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees for the Charter Township of Canton does hereby recognize the month of November 2020 as Native American Heritage Month and urges the people of the of the Canton Township to observe Native American Heritage Month with appropriate programs and activities. Support. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a resolution with the support. Um, so thank you. It's a very important. Clerk Segrist, can we please have a roll call for those in favor of the motion to read this resolution into our minutes into Canton Township? Borninsky. Oops. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Thank you. The motion passes and the resolution is in our, into our minutes. Um, the next item, we can go to the general calendar. We're going to start with G0, which was the item that we added. So let me see, let me pull that up. Um, G0, request approval of contract with Comcast Enterprise Services for internet service. Madam Supervisor, Madam Supervisor, I move to approve the three-year agreement with Comcast to provide internet service at an increased capacity for the township. Support. So let me see. Um, so the township is sourced its primary internet access from Comcast Enterprise Services. The service provided by Comcast has been extremely solid and sound and provides the numerous departments whose business applications reside out on the internet, a very high level of access and uptime. The current contract with Comcast Enterprise Services was scheduled to expire in 2021 and utilize speeds of 100 megabytes per second. With the ongoing pandemic and the need to allow our employees to work remotely, it was necessary to increase our internet capacity. Comcast was able to increase our capacity to 500 megabits per second for a nominal cost increase of $66 per month if we signed a three-year agreement with Comcast. This was discussed with uh, Supervisor Graham Hudak, former clerk and treasurer. Um, this was considered an emergency purchase due to the ongoing pandemic. Due to the time-sensitive nature of meeting the contract signed prior, Supervisor Williams signed the contract last week in order to keep the process moving. The original contract was 1,494 a month for 36 months, which totaled 53,784. And the new contract is 1,560 a month for 36 months, totaling 56,160. Um, Director, Wendy, do you want to add to that? No, um, just real quick and short. I had a, um, we met last week with um, Supervisor Graham Hudak and um, Clerk Segrist and Treasurer Slavens just to talk about the sensitive nature of this and making sure we move forward. So I know there's a couple new trustees on the board that this did fall under the emergency um, purchase. We wanted to make sure we got in the process to get the ball rolling to get the increased um, internet capacity 
So we did have Supervisor Williams prior to Supervisor Graham Hudak getting um, sworn in, sign that contract and, and get it moving. Um, the the uh, Comcast has been notified that and has received a contract. We're in the queue to get that increased capacity. We haven't gotten it yet. Um, so we have had a couple instances where we've had some internet issues, but hopefully we'll um, get this up and running shortly in the next couple of days. But otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any board questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I note that the contract is for three years. So um, I'm just wondering if there's any um, possibility that if, you know, after um, COVID is over, if we find that we don't need the 500 Mbps, um, is there the possibility of lowering that um, speed and, and then also getting a, a little bit lower rate from Comcast, or are we locked in for the three years? I, I believe at this point we are locked in. We can we can ask the question. Comcast has been pretty flexible with us um, when we've needed to increase speeds and in working with us. Um, so I imagine they would also work with us again. But my my sense from talking to to the other directors is that this whole COVID is likely going to change the way we're doing business, and we've been trying to increase our technology um, and the capabilities to work more remotely and having, um, you know, different internet type experiences. So I know, you know, like our municipal services department is trying to do more online with allowing online um, applications and permitting, and this will also help um, give us extra speed across the internet. So I, I think in the long run, this is probably actually the right direction for the township to go in to increase that speed. But um, should the need after COVID, and we think we have a lot of excess capacity, we certainly can can approach Comcast with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? I have a question for Director Trumbull. So it's $66 a month for 36 months, right? So we're talking about $2,500 here? Yeah, correct. Okay, that's a pretty good deal um, for, it was a, is it a five time, five, five, 500% increase? Yeah, 500, or, yeah. yeah. Five. Okay. Yeah, so well, congratulations on negotiating that. That's a great, great deal. Thank you. I'm in favor. Any other, any other board questions? Anybody, any public questions? Let me raise hand. Great. Thank you. So, Clerk Segrist, can we please take a roll call to cast a motion? Wardinsky. Aye. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Ganguly, I apologize. Aye. Segrist, aye. Flavins. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. Great motion passes. So on to item G1. Can we draw here a motion for item G1 for the bid award and purchase? Madam Supervisor, I move to award the bid and approve a purchase order for the purchase of Field cameras and lenses for the cable studio to provide Provido or Provideo at 26471 South Point Road in Perrysburg, Ohio, 43551, in the amount of $29,098 with funds to be paid from the account number listed, capital outlay computers and equipment. Support. Thank you. In October of 2020, an invitation to bid ITD went out for the purchase of field cameras and lenses for the cable studio. Four companies submitted proposals based on the needs of the cable studio with three of the four bids coming in at the same price. Based on the successful working history with the township, Leisure Services is recommending for video systems for purchasing the cameras in the amount of $29,098. Director Holmberger, do you have anything to add to that? No additional information, happy to answer any questions. Thanks, are there any questions from the board? Any questions? Tanya? Yeah, so Director Hohenberger, is this a um, vendor uh, that you have used in the past? It says you're working with them for the past history because there are similar priced bids. So I just had a question about that. Yeah, we've had, we've worked with them on several projects that they are a lead consultant on the uh, video board that we put in at the theater or the projection screen out there. We, they've, they've worked with us on 
a lot of our um, camera and equipment needs, and we know that they are they're very responsive when we have any issues. They're here within 24 hours usually to help us out. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. We lose Anne Marie. Looks like she's frozen. Madam. Oh, it looks like she dropped off. Okay. And we can wait a few moments for um, supervisor to rejoin. Um, I'm going to say after maybe three minutes, I might entertain a motion for a chairperson pro tem, at which point we could continue on with the agenda. Need that increased speed as well. Yes. <laughs> well needed. <laughs> I think that well, I think that's her speed. I don't think that'll help her home connection. <laughs> if we could get her her hot spot on her phone, though, it might help. <laughs> but that was well, well done. Yeah. <laughs> All so right. It looks as though she is rejoining us. Madam Supervisor, you unmute. Yeah, unmute if you would like to unmute yourself and take back the meeting. Um, so, per procedures, can we please have a roll call vote on the motion? Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. Great. The motion passes. Um, on to the next item, G2. Consider wording bid and approve a purchase order for carpeting replacement at HSB and PRG. All right, Madam Supervisor, I move to award the bid for the carpeting replacement for Pheasant Run Golf Club and Human Service Building to Independent Carpet One at 1400 North Wayne Road in Westland, Michigan, 48185, the amount of $13,500 with funds to be paid from the account number listed for capital improvement plan for President Run Golf Club and $17,450 from the account number listed for capital improvement plan for human services building. Support. Support. All right, it looks as though we are... Oh. Okay, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. We can hear you now. Yep. Thank you. So on October 29th, um, 2020, bids were returned for the carpeting replacement for human services building and Pheasant Run Golf Club. Three bids are received with independent. Okay, Madam Supervisor, we're losing Madam Supervisor. I wonder if she turns her video off and just speaks if yeah. that might help. That might be that might be uh, beneficial. We can I will um, continue reading the executive summary if that if that if, if everyone's comfortable with that. Yeah. Three bids were received with independent carpet. One coming in at the lowest, therefore Leisure Services is recommending independent carpet one for the carpet replacement at Pheasant Run Golf Club in the amount of twelve thousand. $1,000 in human services building will cost a, with a cost of $15,950. An additional $3,000 for contingency will be split and added to each facility making pheasant runs, a total amount 13,500 in human services building, a total amount of 17,450. And there's information in the attachments. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see that the supervisor Graham Hudek has, has rejoined. So I will ask if there is any board comment or question. Yeah. 
go, uh, Trustee Bornanski. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank Director Hohenberger for um, answering some questions that I had on this. And um, just so the other trustees under, understand, um, the bid was, um, was like an initial bid and then there were a couple more um, locations um, and I'm, I'm talking about the human services building. There are a few more locations um, added and so the um, bid sheet only reflects that first bid and then there's you'll see there's the three um, attachments that list the um, all the locations for that building. So just so that everyone's clear that um, that 24,000 was not the um, the total bid there. Excellent. Any additional? So, does, what are, yeah. so with that said, what amount, um, Director Hohenberger, are we approving the, the 17,450 and the 14,500? Those, those are the real totals. That's correct. Thank you both. Any additional comment or question? All right, I will ask myself to call the roll. Uh, Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Kanguli. Aye. Graham Hudak is currently absent. Uh, Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. And Snydeman. Aye. All right, motion carries. The ayes have it. I would now entertain a motion to appoint a chairperson pro tem in the absence of a supervisor for the remainder of the meeting, provided if she comes back, if she if she cuts out again, um, so that we can default to have somebody chair the meeting in her absence. Um, would someone like to make a motion? I move that I'll appoint Michael Segrus as pro tem chair of the meeting. Is there some is there a support? Okay. Support. It's been moved by Trustee Snyderman and supported by Trustee Borninski to appoint myself, Michael Segris, chairperson pro tem for the remainder of the meeting. All those in favor, Borninski? Aye. Oh, sorry. Is there any further any discussion? This, this is a debatable motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no debate. Okay. Borninski? Aye. Foster? Are you, are you, oh. Go ahead. All right. Oh, I was just going to ask if you were comfortable doing it, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like the supervisor is coming back. Um, let's dispense with this motion as it is before the body has been seconded, and that way we have it as a backup going forward. We might not need to use it, though. Um, King Gooley? Okay. Aye. Graham Hudak? Aye. All right, uh, Segrist, aye. Uh, Slavens, aye. aye. All right, and Snydeman. Aye. All right. Motion passes. I apologize, we lost internet. Oh, that's all right. So, um, Mrs. Madam Supervisor, the board just approved um, having me, having, uh, it was moved by Trustee Snydeman and supported by Trustee Borninski, and then it passed unanimously that I would be the, the chairperson pro tempore if at any point in time uh, you, you, you cut out for the remainder of the meeting. But since you're back, I'm gonna, I will set, step back into the role of secretary for the board and you will take the reins again. <laughs> Thank you. But I am here just in case at the end. If you, Thank you. Yeah. Figures. First meeting, right? <laughs> Okay, item G, G3, um, consider approval of a contract and purchase order for public safety headquarters, elevator modernization and associated police budget amendment. Do I hear a motion? Madam Supervisor, I move to approve the following amendment to the 2020 police budget, uh, increase in revenues to the fund balance appropriation account in the amount of 144,386, increase to pro and then increase um, 
appropriations in the uh, capital outlay buildings account in the same amount, $144,386. And further move to approve a contract and purchase order in the amount of $144,386 to be paid from the account number listed, capital outlay buildings for Detroit Elevator Company at 2121 Burndett, Ferndale, Michigan, 48220 for the elevator modernization at Public Safety Headquarters. Support. In August 2020, Leisure Services advertised a request for proposal to seek a company to provide elevator maintenance and repair and modernization. A selection committee comprised of finance, public safety, and leisure services staff interviewed the four companies who submitted proposals. After careful evaluation, the selection committee is recommending Detroit Elevator Company for the public safety headquarters elevator modernization in the amount of $144,386. Public safety elevator was chosen to be modernized after multiple failures and elevator shutdowns in 2020. The elevator is original to the building and is over 40 years old. Um, uh, Director Hohenberger, do you have anything to add? No, I don't believe so. Um, Director Baugh is available and Stockline as well. It's, the elevator okay. certainly affects them more directly than anybody else. Thank you. Do we have any board questions? I'll just make a comment that I'm glad that the elevator is finally getting fixed. <laughs> yeah, that's spooky. <laughs> Kate? I, I just wanted to comment too that um, I noted that it's 40 years, at least 40 years old. So um, original to the building, which I think um, shows that um, we have been very patient with the uh, trying to keep this elevator going. And uh, now I'm happy that we can replace it so, or at least modernize it and, and get it going so that we're not having the issues anymore. Thank you. Any other board comments or questions? Any public comments or questions? I don't see any hands, okay. Great, um, clerk seekers, can we take a motion to pass? Can we take roll call to pass, please? Orninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Jean Gulley. Aye. Deb Hudak. Aye. Segrist. Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Motion passes. Um, item G4, consider the award a contract and approve a purchase order to protect concrete coatings for concrete floor polish at the public safety headquarters. Madam Supervisor, I move to award the contract and approve a purchase order to protect concrete coatings incorporated in 51084 Milano Drive in Macomb, Michigan, 48042 for the concrete floor polish at the public safety headquarters in the amount of $26,775 to be paid from the account number listed for capital improvement plan. Support. On March 5th, 2020, Leisure Services advertised a request for proposal for concrete floor polish at the public safety headquarters. There were two proposals received and both companies were interviewed by a panel consisting of leisure services, finance, and public safety staff. Currently, public safety headquarters main floor consists of tile. The tile in the roll call room and associated corridors are over 20 years old and has endured high amounts of daily traffic, creating a lot of wear and tear. It was decided that instead of replacing the tile in the roll call room, which will ultimately have the same outcome, the tile will be removed and the concrete will be polished to ensure a longer life expectancy. Base cost proposals provided by both contractors was for the same amount of $20,475 for 3,500 square feet of tile removal and concrete polishing. Based on the overall proposals, presentation, and company interviews, the team scored ProTech Concrete Coating Incorporated the highest. Therefore, the selection committee is recommending ProTech Concrete to perform the base project plus two additions, including cove base supply and installation, as well as two-part grout coating for a total amount of $26,775. Um, Director Hohenberger or uh, Director Chad, do you have any input also? Anything else you wanna say? Uh, from the police side, I just uh, keep in mind, this is where the majority of our workforce starts their day. And to improve the environment, I think it's very important. When you look around and you have a nice clean starting point, uh, we appreciate the support to uh, have that uh, for improved. It, uh, it's pretty worn down. It's, I believe some of you have actually seen it and probably made the comments to me before. So I appreciate the uh, support and uh, Greg's work to make this happen. Thank you. Any other board questions or director comments? And any public comments? No? 
Great. Clerk Seegers, can you please take a roll to approve the motion? Yes. Saborninsky. Aye. Foster. Aye. Tinguli. Aye. Uh, Graham Hudak. Aye. Seegers, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Okay. A motion. Uh, aye. Motion passes. Item G5, consider authorizing a budget amendment and purchase order to ASSA Abloy entrances for the Township Automated Door Service. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board uh, make the following, approve the following transfers and amendments to the 2020 and 2021, 2021 budgets as presented. Report. In August 2019, Leisure Services advertised a request for proposal for automated pedestrian door maintenance and service. In response, only one company, ASS Abloy Entrance System, submitted a proposal. Therefore, we are recommending a three-year contract with ASSA Abloy Entrance Systems for the maintenance and service of automated doors located at township-owned facilities in the amount of $16,650 annually. Um, so, Director Hohenberger, do you have any other things to add? Yeah, this is specifically for all of your automated doors that we have throughout the township. So, for example, the front door at the administration building is where, as well as all the doors, um, such as the rear door where you have the automatic push button, push button for um, ADA accessible. Okay, do we have any board questions? Any trustees? I have a question about the motion, the, if I may, Madam Supervisor? Yes, go ahead. The RBA calls for the amendments or the adjustments and a PO, but I only see that the motion itself references the adjustments. Um, did you also want to approve a purchase order as well? And if so, can I, should I amend the motion? Would it, I would like to uh, amend the motion to add, um, to approve the uh, purchase order. Okay, so let's amend the motion to, so basically I move to make the following, oh no, that would be the transfers. So I, yeah, I'm just, I would make a motion that we add a, a purchase order to uh, I hear that. Okay, do I hear a second? No, he's gotta make the motion. Okay. So sure, I'll second we... it. Okay. So are there any questions on the amended motion? Nope, any public questions? Okay, great. So should we, we should read the amendment. Are we gonna vote? Uh, are we gonna vote to approve the amendment? And yes. And vote on the motion? Yeah, so the appropriate procedure would be to vote on the amendment, then the motion, or we treat as a friendly amendment and merge the two of them and vote on them as, as one. Yes, why don't we vote on them as one? And so I would say, can, Clerk Seegers, can you read the amended motion? Well, Madam Supervisor, I move that the board approve the following transfers and amendments to the 2020 and 2021, 20, 2021 budget and um, and uh, approve a purchase order to ASA, ASSA uh, Bloy Entrance Systems for Township Automated Door Service. Thank you. Any questions? Discussion? Further discussion? So, Clerk yeah. Seegers, can you please take? Oh, sorry, Stephen. I I did. Yep. Um, Greg, do you have any thoughts as to why there was only one bidder? Is there only one company that does this? Or? They're kind of the, the main uh, company that does this in the area and we've been working with them for years. Um, oh, we have, okay. Amendment. Cool. Any other questions? So click, Clerk Seegers, can you please take a roll call on passing the amended motion? Yes, Borninski. Aye. Foster? Aye. Tinguli? Aye. Graham Hudek? Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens? Aye. Steineman? Aye. 
Thank you. The amended motion is passed. Item G6, consider approval of contract for elevator maintenance and repair. Madam Supervisor, I move to award the contract to Detroit Elevator Company at 2121 Bernadette Ferndale, Michigan 48220 for the elevator maintenance repair. On August 27, 2020, Leisure Services staff advertised a request for proposal uh, support. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I think we're getting some delays here. Thank you. On August 27, 2020, yeah. Leisure Services staff advertised a request for proposal for elevator modernizations and preventative maintenance services for Canton Township's nine elevators. A selection committee comprised of Leisure Services, Public Safety, and Finance staff interviewed and scored the four elevator companies who submitted proposals. After careful evaluation, it was determined there should only be one contact contract, I'm sorry, for the elevator modernization and public safety and a separate contract for the preventative maintenance of the nine elevators. Based on the interview and scoring, the selection committee is recommending to award three-year service contract to Detroit Elevator Company for the preventative maintenance of all nine elevators using the proposed fee schedule. Um, Director Honberger, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, just so for clarification on that, we did do the um, RFP for the modernization for the public safety um, elevator combined with the um, preventative maintenance and those were separated out into two different contracts. So that's why we had the, the previous contract as well as this, but it's all on the same RFP. Okay, are there any board questions? Um, any public questions? Seeing none. All right, Clerk Seegers, can you please take roll call for the amendment motion to pass? Sorry. Boninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ginguli. Aye. Rev. Hudak. Aye. Seegers. Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snydeman. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Item G7, consider approving the purchase and installation of a security fence for the PSD generator and cell tower with associated items and a 2020 police budget amendment. All right, I'm gonna read these as two, as one motion, if I may, uh, Madam Supervisor. I move to approve the purchase and installation of a security fence for Michigan Fence Outlet in the amount of $44,700 and approve the associated purchase orders issued to interstate security in the amount of $3,225 from Corby Energy Services in the amount of $5,200 and Manic Smith Group in the amount not to exceed $2,000. And I move to approve an amendment to the 2020 police budget to increase expenditures for the capital outlay buildings account number listed by $55,125 and the increased revenues from fund balance appropriation account by $55,125. Support. Thank you. The police department is requesting to purchase and install an aluminum industrial grade security fence to enclose the PSD backup generator and cell tower. Facilities maintenance assisted in the coordination of this project and has a township contract with Michigan Fence Outlet, who quoted $44,700 for the eight foot high 250 linear foot fence. Additionally, to complete the project, the department is requesting purchase orders be issued for a key card access reader from Interstate Security in the amount of $3,000, $3,225 electrical work for the card reader and an LED entrance light from Corby Energy Services in the amount of $5,200 and complex utility staking from Manic Smith Group not to exceed $2,000. The department is also requesting amendment to the 2020 police budget to use police fund balance for this project totaling $55,125. Uh, Director Bao, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, if, if I just take a few minutes. This is uh, important for our reaccreditation, which for the board, we were just uh, reaccredited based on a condition, which the condition was we didn't have a security fence around the tower and generator. So the reaccreditation really depends on security. Besides the need being there, uh, we also needed to maintain our um, reaccreditation with Kalia. Yeah, we go back in front of Kalia in November to show that this fence had been put up. So I appreciate the support on it. Uh, it's a requirement. If you see in the back of the packet, you actually see um, communication from Kalia that states uh, 81.3.1. That's the only standard issue that we needed to resolve um, to maintain the 
reaccreditation. Thank you. Any board questions or comments? Kate? I think you're on mute there. Sorry, I oh. downsized instead of muting and then I couldn't get it back. Mm -hmm. um, Director Bach, could you just, um, for, for um, me as a new board member, and I don't know, maybe member Ganguly also might um, have questions about this, but could you just give us an, a little snip snippet of information on what Kalia is? Yeah, certainly, it's a reaccreditation or it's accreditation body, international accreditation body for law enforcement services. And we've started about 13 years ago, our first time around, and we just went through a, a process where uh, we went in front of a group of individuals from outside the community. They're not connected to the police department that go over the standards. Um, well over 400 standards that uh, we're in compliance with. And we met every standard at 97, oh, almost every standard besides defense and allowing us to meet 97% of the standards. And a little background of one of the um, auditors, he said that was the best one he's done. And we've done 30 police departments here over the last few years. So we're excited about that, but uh, it was a little bit embarrassing with the fencing not being in place. Uh, so we knew it was coming. It's been four years we've been promising to put this fence up. So, uh, but they, they break down everything from uh, some of the main issues that law enforcement is facing, especially in now, which includes oversight, um, use of force, and all those types of things that uh, police departments are highlighted daily in the, the national media. But they took a look at our organization and they were impressed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other board questions? Tanya? Uh, so Director Bog, how often is, does the audit happen? Um, it was every three years. It's gonna be, um, okay. the next one will be actually a year from now because we have to go and show this uh, fencing. So it's every three years. Um, this year was a little modified because of COVID and they had to do it uh, virtually. And um, Greg's team helped us out a lot with leisure services with cable and our deputy chief actually moved about throughout the organization with the video cameras. And they do it remotely um, on a monthly basis, looking at our policies and procedures, making sure the standards are in place on a monthly basis. But um, the reoccurring accreditation uh, is every three years. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other board questions? Any attendee questions? Seeing none, Clerk Segrist, will you please take the roll call to pass the motion? Morning. Um, I, I, you cut out, so I wasn't sure if you said my name, but I think oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Foster. Aye. Uh, Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Motion passes. Next item is G8, consider accepting a FEMA assistance to firefighters grant for the purchase of 10 monitor defibrillators and a 2020 fire budget amendment. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve accepting the Canton portion of a regional FEMA assistance to firefighters grant for 10 uh, Zoll X series monitor defibrillators in the amount of 300 to $23,493.53 and to approve a 2020 fire budget amendment to increase expenditures to the capital outlay machinery and equipment account by $400,839.24 to increase revenues to the federal grants account number listed by two by $3,000, oh, sorry, $323,493. dollars 53 and to decrease expenditures and transfer to fund balance account by $77,345.71 and to approve the purchase of said monitor defibrillators for a 10% match of $32,345.80 paid to the city of Dearborn Heights as grant administrators. This includes in a trade-in value of nine monitors valued at $44,999.91. Good point. Thank you. 
The Canton Fire Department has been awarded a portion of regional FEMA assistance to firefighters grant as outlined below. A regional grant was submitted by the City of Dearborn Heights Fire Department for monitor defibrillators on behalf of multiple communities, including Canton Township. The regional grant was awarded in the amount of $1,870,020.91 with a required 10% match by community recipients. Of that, $323,493.53 is specific to Canton for the purchase of 10 Zolex series monitor defibrillators, including accessories and maintenance plans. Canton's 10% match amount is $32,345.80 paid to the city of Dearborn Heights as a grant administrator. Director Stockline, do you want to add anything to that? Um, just that I appreciate you guys supporting this. As you know, I mean, it's difficult to get these grants and uh, that's the reason we found it um, to be uh, a little easier to get them through regional grants because they give them out a little bit easier when we team up with the other communities. So um, with that being said, I'm happy to answer any questions. These are monitors that will last us a good seven years. Um, that's about a seven year lifespan on these monitors. So um, saving our budget, you know, 300,000 over the next seven years is, uh, is a good thing. So. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any board questions? Summer? Congratulations um, on the grant. Um, is this to replace the defibrillators that we already have or to add an addition to them? This will uh, replace, um, I think it's eight of the defibrillators that we currently have. A couple of them are newer still, so we're going to keep those as spares or backups. Um, but this will continue um, to allow us to be ALS um, ready for all of our fire engines, as well as our heavy rescue, our tower, and all the ambulances. So it pretty much puts every every unit, um, minus our um, command vehicle, um, in an ALS position, and, and our um, backup tower. So, <clears throat> but other than that, we'll, have, we'll be ALS uh, on every single vehicle. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other board questions? Comments? Kate? Just um, really a comment that um, I think this is a great, um, great um, collaboration with all the different communities that participated. And um, of course, thank you to Dearborn Heights for administering the grant. Um, also, I very much appreciate bringing all of our equipment up to ALS because advanced life support is really important. So thank you. Thank you. Any other board questions or comments? Okay, any public comments? All right, seeing none, um, Clerk Seegers, can you please take a roll call to pass the motion? Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segris Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Motion passes. Item G10. Consider final approval of the Berkshire Apartments Plan Development District and the approval of the site plan for Berkshire Apartments. Are A we in point nine? of clarification, we Madam Supervisor, I believe we skipped. Nine. Nine, consider approving a resolution adopting the Wayne County Hazard Mitigation. Thank you. So item G9, um, Clerk Seegers, can you please read the motion then? Madam Supervisor, I move to approve the below resolution adopting the Wayne County Hazard Mitigation Plan to be signed by the Township Clerk, myself, adoption of the Wayne County Hazard Mitigation Plan, whereas the mission of the Charter Township of Canton includes the charge to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of the people of Canton, and whereas Charter Township of Canton, Michigan is subject to flooding, tornadoes, winter storms, and other natural technological and human hazards, whereas the Wayne County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and the Wayne County Local Emergency Planning Committee comprised of representatives from the county, municipalities, and stakeholder organizations have prepared a recommended hazard mitigation plan that reviews the options to protect uh, people and reduce damage from these hazards, whereas the Charter Township of Canton has participated in the planning process of development for development of this plan, providing information specific to local hazard priorities, encouraging public participation, identifying desired hazard mitig uh, mitigation strategies, 
in reviewing the draft plan, whereas the Wayne County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management with the Wayne County Local Emergency Planning Committee, LEPC, has developed a, the Wayne County Hazard Mitigation Plan, the plan, as an official document of the county and establishing a county hazard mitigation coordinating committee pursuant to the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 um, and associated regulations. And whereas the plan has been widely circulated for review by the county residents Municipal, municipal officials and state, federal, and local review agencies and has been revised to reflect their concerns. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Charter Township of Canton Board of Trustees that the Wayne County Hazard Mitigation Plan or sections of the plan specific to the affected community is uh, hereby adopted as an official plan of the Charter Township of Canton and the township supervisor is charged with supervising the implementation of the plan's recommendations as they pertain to the charter township of Canton and within the funding limitations as provided by the charter township of Canton or other sources. Thank you. Support. Support. Thank you. The 2020 Wayne County Hazard Mitigation Plan has passed FEMA review and is ready to be adopted by each participating jurisdiction. Upon adoption, FEMA approval letters will recognize each adopting participant as officially approved and eligible to apply for, receive, or directly benefit from hazard mitigation project grant funds under the Hazard Mitigation Assistance Programs. Director Stockline, do you have anything to add? There's a lot said. There's a whole lot there, isn't there? Um, <laughs> it's just uh, really, this is um, saving us a lot of money. The county did this, uh, it was about a $100,000 project, saves us the money of going through it. And Will Hayes has um, been instrumental in, in making sure that this happens and this covers us. And things as simple as the, the COVID grant that we received for a couple hundred thousand dollars, we have to have this in place in order to receive those, those federal dollars. Um, so, Really, it's a just general blanket hazard mitigation plan, but it's specific to us. We'll pull it into our needs um, to cover that those, uh, make sure that we receive those grant funds. And if we have tornadoes or anything like that, flooding, um, that we can receive those grant monies. So it's really something that's necessary in order to receive that those dollars. Okay, thank you. Do we have any board questions or comments? No? Any public question or comment? Seeing none, thank you, Clerk Seegers. Will you please take a roll call to pass the motion? Orninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Anguli. Aye. Graham Hudek. Aye. Seegers. Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Motion passes. Item G10, consider final approval of the Berkshire Apartments Plan Development District and approval of the site plan for Berkshire Apartments. Your motion. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution, approval of the final plan development district and site plan for Berkshire Apartments. Whereas project sponsor has requested final approval of a plan development district for Berkshire Apartments and site plan approval for Berkshire Apartments on the property located on the side of Salt Road and west of Waterside Road. And whereas planning commission reviewed the final uh, plan development plan, plan development agreement and site plan and voted six to zero to recommend approval of the requests as they meet the criteria for a plan development result in definite benefits to the community and comply with the applicable site design requirements of the zoning ordinance, except where modifications are approved. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, does hereby approve the Berkshire Apartments final plan development district and approve the site plan for Berkshire Apartments on tax parcel listed for uh, as proposed in the planning, in the plan development agreement and plan documents subject to widening the eastbound boulevard lane of Stonewood Road by two to four feet to allow for dedicated right and left turn lanes at Canton Center Road in accordance with the accommodation recommendation of the traffic impact assessment. Support. The applicant proposes to locate 172 apartment units on the approximately 24.63 acres located on the north side of Salts Road, west of Waterside Road, which is west of Canton Center Road. 
The project density of almost seven residential units per acre is less than the maximum density of eight units per acre recommended by the comprehensive plan and allowed under R6 zoning. The site will have four points of access from Salts Road to the south, from an extension of Greystone Lane to the northeast, and two new connecting roads to Waterside Road to the east. All buildings will be two stories. Each planned development district is required to demonstrate definite benefits to the community. The project sponsor proposes the following definite benefits. Maintaining 54.45% of the site, which is 13.41 acres, as open space, which is an increase from the 12.29 acres of open space on the approved preliminary PD. This exceeds the 25% open space minimum, completing the Cambridge PD in a consistent and compatible manner, including architectural design, attached two car garages, reduction in the total number of residential units from the original apartments at Cambridge PD, connection and additional parking for the community center on the west side of Waterside Road, construction of an internal sidewalk network that exceeds the minimum requirement in the zoning ordinance, and the construction of a sidewalk on the adjacent parcel to the east on the north side of Salts Road, which will flip gap, I'm sorry, I'm sorry which will fill gap that is frequently traveled. Additionally, Salts Road was previously paved as part of a previous Cambridge PD, and the proposal layout of the buildings in Berkshire is based on the locations of existing infrastructure on the site. Preliminary approval of the planned development was granted by the Township Board of Trustees on July 28, 2020. So, uh, Director Jay, did you want to any, add anything, or is this the one Patrick's going to take us through? Um, I don't have anything more to add. Um, the, the... All the information is actually in the packet. I know that uh, Trustee Snyderman likes pretty pictures, so I do have some <laughs> some items to show if you want to see some of the overviews. But other than that, we're just here for some questions, and I do believe that the petitioner is um, attending the meeting as well. If there were questions directly for them, okay. So are they so um, are they um, elevated to answer questions? Uh, they're not at this time, only if I believe that there were questions, would we elevate them? All right, we do have a hand raised also. So, but do we have any board questions or comments first? I think the hand okay. is the developer. Oh, was that the developer? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Galbraith, if that's yeah. is that he shall is. I, yes. Madam Supervisor, shall I promote him to panelist? Yes, please. Galbraith, you have been promoted to panelist. If you want to speak, you can unmute yourself. If you'd like to share your video, you can also do so. The video I have will be for the next one, Clerk Segrest. Not, not this item. Okay. You are all you are a go for sharing a screen uh, when you're ready for whichever item. Mr. Galbraith, do you have anything to add? You're on mute, just to let you know. You can unmute yourself. There we go. There you go. Yeah, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Um, we were before the Township Board with the preliminary PD a few months ago. We've been working with the planning department. Uh, this is really the completion of the last, the very last element of the original PD that was approved in uh, some 21 years ago. Uh, and we strived uh, to maintain the compatibility with the original concept. And I think we've improved upon the development from a density standpoint. It's uh, less dense by nearly 100 units, which I believe Patrick's uh, report confirmed. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board members or staff might have. Okay, Kate, I believe I saw your hand. Actually, I, I was um, going to ask about the, the history because I had noticed that the um, development had been approved quite a long time ago, but Mr. Gilbert um, touched on that, so I'm okay. Okay, thank you. Any other board questions? Stephen? Thank you, um, and thank you, Mr. Galbraith and um, Dr. Smith. Um, so I think it's great that we're finally finishing this development and I look forward to seeing construction whenever it starts. Um, and I, I also see that um, there's additional green space than was required. So I appreciate that. Um, 
I think last time we talked about the sidewalk at the neighboring um, house that is still there, and I heard mention of it in the description of this action item. So I was wondering, is that what we're talking about? When we could, were you able to talk to that neighbor and get um, easement to add sidewalk? We have not approached the, uh, the neighbor at this time. Uh, we intend to approach them to try to secure the easement. Unfortunately, the right of way does not exist and we will need to procure an easement. We would, uh, and we would have every intention of doing that. Uh, we will go to them with your standard form of easement and we're certain easement. Um, in the event we can't uh, procure the easement, we don't have any uh, governmental powers to get that easement. Uh, we, as I mentioned to Patrick sure. and provided for in the PD, um, what we would do was, would be to escrow or give the city, the, the township, excuse me, the funds to complete that sidewalk if the township were willing to proceed to get the easement. I have uh, every expectation that we will be able to uh, to receive an easement from these people, but it's uh, certainly at their discretion. Any other board okay. question? Oh, Stephen, go ahead. Um, I had one more question, sorry. Um, and so, um, Jatrick, I don't know what assistance we can give in terms of getting that sidewalk. I'm not sure what, in the description, in the summary that are read. It says something about filling a gap, a sidewalk gap on the north side of Salt Road, east on the north side of Salt Road. So I thought maybe that's what we were talking about here. Yeah. Um, and um, Mr. Oh, go ahead, Jay. No, I was just going to say that in regards to obtaining the easement for the one, um, the private property that is still there that's not part of the development, we definitely will work hand in hand with the developer to try and approach the, that homeowner um, as a team. Uh, and, and talk about the community benefit of filling that gap and do what we can to assist with that process. Okay. Um, and um, I asked this a, a year or two ago with the um, completion on the east side of, of the uh, condos that were there. Um, the fencing that has been put up there in the past is um, has over the years deteriorated. Um, will that be upgraded and fixed, Mr. Galbraith, when you do your landscaping? Yeah, the, the, uh, the fencing, the perimeter fencing along Canton Center Road and Salts Road, um, as some of that has been in place some 20 years since the original PD. It's, it's right. an ongoing process to do proper maintenance to that. And we will be continuing to do that because that is the uh, the marketing front door to not only the traditions, but to the Glens and the Berkshires. So it's, uh, it's an ongoing process. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, some of it was fixed. In the we have repaired, I, I we have in the repaired some does, of it. It's a nice we've, fence. We've changed out sections of it, and we will continue to do so. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other board questions or comments? Tanya? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add a comment that it was, uh, it's very nice that from the last time they have decided to, you know, have more open space and like we are looking for more green spaces. And I think that's a uh, good progress on the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board comments or questions? Any public comment or questions? I don't see any hands. Thank you. So Clerk Segrist, can you please read the, to take the roll call to approve the motion? Orninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Anguli. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. All right, motion passes. Um, item G11. Thank Consider you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Galbraith. Consider approval of amended Canton business support provision in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. 
Madam uh, Supervisor, I move to approve the amended Canton business support provisions ending on March 31, 2021, uh, allowing for extended outdoor dining, sidewalk sales, and temporary signage as detailed attached. Support. The COVID-19 pandemic has been devastating to many local businesses in Canton. In order to support these businesses and allow them to take measures to recover from the last three months of reduced productivity and service, it's imperative that the township take action to assist where we can. Earlier this year, the Board of Trustees approved the Canton Business Support Provision that eased restrictions on outdoor dining and sidewalks. <coughs> This provision allowed for an easy application and approval process to allow outdoor dining and sidewalk sales from June 10th, 2020 through October 31st, 2020. It is proposed to amend this provision and extend the date through March 31st, 2021. To further support the restaurant establishments during this pandemic, it is also proposed to allow leniency on temporary signs and allow for a portable temporary sign to promote COVID-19 operation status that is ours curbside and outdoor dining. Director Smith, did you want to add anything to this or any other directors? Um, so working with Director Baugh and uh, looking at some of the, the, the issues that were occurring around town with temporary signage, we knew that there was a need to address it. And I believe that Clark Segrist um, had mentioned this um, in trying to give some leniency to the businesses and our economic, economic development uh, director, uh, Kristen Thomas as, well, Thomas as well, we spoke with. So um, we had passed this back in June and with the progression of COVID and the new orders, this made sense to give some more leniency so that we can give some direction to our ordinance officers and our staff that are out there trying to enforce this, but still give some leniency to the businesses to support the, the uh, economic development of Canton Township. Thank you. Any board questions or comments? Okay. Hi. Um, so it's proposed to go through the end of March. Um, and then I'm, I'm wondering if, if we're still finding that there's a need, which hopefully there is not. Um, but if there's still a need, then would we go, um, would we um, have the, that, the thought of extending this and if we do um, can we make sure that we don't have um, any kind of gap in there because I know the last one um, expired on October 31st and so we've now been almost a month without any of these provisions for our businesses. Do you want me to comment to that supervisor? Sure please. Yeah, in regards to the gap, um, it, it appears on paper, black and white, that there's a gap, but we have not been enforcing if they were keeping their outdoor dining. Um, what's being added to this one is the actual temporary signage, which was not addressed when we first started this. Um, and I think, yes, coming if we going into March 31st, we will look at any sort of needs that need to be extended or modified at that time. And also during the winter months, uh, we have a feeling that we're going to see some trends as, um, from restaurants that are going to want to do more outdoor dining, dining on a permanent basis. So we're going to look at how we can relook at that and, um, and address that on an ongoing basis, even without COVID. So yes, we are looking at all that. Is Clerk Stegras? Uh, yeah, my, my question is somewhat germane to this, but I guess in, in following up with that, uh, is there an openness from a municipal services standpoint to pursuing a potential increase in our ability to have outside seating and things of that nature long term? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, look, uh, I had Patrick's on the uh, call tonight and you know, we've had some discussion and I've also had discussion with our building official, um, uh, Director Stockline. Uh, we know there's a piece that uh, fire plays in that too from a, from a traffic control perspective. Um, and, and fire safety. So um, yes, we're looking at all that and we'll be looking at bringing some recommendations forward in the future. Yeah, Diane? I just wanted to make a quick comment talking to a lot of the businesses, the restaurant owners, you know, they, they really appreciate us um, letting them put signs out. It's going to be helpful as people are driving by to know that they are open and some are open just for lunch. So 
them are open um, all day. So this is uh, helping them quite a bit uh, bring businesses in for carry out. Thank you, Summer. I just wanted to say um, I'm totally in favor of this. I think it's great that we are looking to support our business owners in this way. And if we can come up with other ways to be creative um, to support them through this difficult time, um, I would be in favor of that as well. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, yeah, so um, we are just talk. We are talking one sign for business, right? The, that's it says signs in the beginning. I wanted to make sure that's that's Correct. what we're talking about. And uh, yeah, I, I have spoken to quite a few restaurants, and they had their signs removed when this initially happened, and they are very appreciative of uh, this option. And any way we can support them, as some as Summer said, in more creative ways, I am all for that. Thank you, Stephen. I think I saw your hand. Yes, Stephen. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm disappointed that we haven't put in a provision that the temperature should not drop below 50 degrees during the winter <laughs> months in Canton. But, <laughs> but besides that, the question I have is that um, uh, I've noticed some restaurants, uh, maybe not here, but in other towns doing things like um, igloos and things like that, um, small dining areas. And I don't know if that is allowed under this. And I don't even know if that's allowed under the health department order and, and what if we have any thoughts on that yet, or is it something we need to discuss? Because as it gets colder and colder and goes down uh, to um, you know below freezing temperatures, that might be uh, something that they start asking for. Um, Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. I do, and if looking at the provision, um, we have had a couple that have actually erected um, a couple of the igloos, and we changed and amended the food establishment provision to allow for the temporary structures um, in accordance with any of the state of Michigan or CDC guidelines that they follow those. We, um, I mean, they have to follow those guidelines themselves, but we can actually permit the structures as long as they're following the CDC guidelines. So we did make that amendment to this provision as well to allow for that. Oh, okay, great. It's in the, um, if you look at the uh, provision, yeah, if you look at the provision, it's actually in the very first bullet um, under the food establishments. Okay. What's the it, So really in essence, what it will do is um, it, it required that go through the building department and the fire department for any sort of outdoor seating um, approval prior to when we were waiving all of the fees um, for that. And so what we did is just added this to it that those temporary structures within those approved dining areas uh, can be included as well. And they'll go through the same process. Thank you. Yep. Just for clarification, I mean, actually, do we have any other board comments or questions? So for clarification, um, Director Jade, does this include um, the allowance of having restaurants the, having the ability to put the igloos out into the parking lot? Are we allowing for, that does include yes. that? Okay. Yes. And they are allowed to put signs in the right of way, correct? Like they did before. Uh, not in the right, it still has to be back out of the right of way, um, but it still allows for the signage. So um, it, it talks about how far away from the curb it has to be and how it's outside of the right of way. So they still can have it, but it can't be in the right of way for safety okay. concerns. Yep. All right. Any other questions? All right. Do we have any? I just wanted to clarify real fast. I Jade's not saying that they can just go out and do it also, right? It has to be approved, like he said, with the fire code and the building, we have to make sure that we have egress and all those things that are attached. So we don't want businesses to think that they can just go and, and, and build the igloos and do those things. They still have to meet with the building officials and the inspectors and do all that and make sure that we're, we're safe for the community. Okay, thank Correct. you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any public comment or question? Okay, seeing none. Thank you. Clerk Seegers, can you please take a roll call to pass the motion? I, I will. Uh, Morninsky? Aye. Uh, Foster? Aye. Uh, Ganguly? Aye. 
Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Ann Snyderman. Aye. Motion passes. Item G12. Consider approval of Havens Orthodontics Minor Plan Development District. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board approve the following resolution, the approval of the minor plan development district for Havens Orthodontics. The project, where is the project sponsor has requested approval of a planned development district for Havens Orthodontics on property located at the southeast corner of Joy Road and Canton Center Road. And where is the planning commission reviewed the plan development plan and plan development agreement and voted six to zero to recommend approval of the request as it meets the criteria for a plan development results in definite benefits to the community and complies with the applicable site design requirements of the zoning ordinance except where modifications are approved and now therefore be it resolved the board of trustees of Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the Havens Orthodontics Plan Development District on the tax parcels listed as uh, proposed in the plan development agreement and plan documents subject to all applicable state and local development regulations. Support. Thank you. The applicant proposes to construct a mixed use building of office and commercial uses at the southeast corner of Joy Road and Canton Center Road, which is 8770 Canton Center Road and 87 58 Canton Center Road. The site currently contains a former UAW assembly and office building, which is proposed to be demolished. Mm. The site is approximately 2.2 acres and currently zoned 01 office. The plan development application proposes uses, uses permitted in the 01 and C1 village shopping districts, as well as a private membership organizations and product sales repair and instruction. <clears throat> Each plan development district is required to demonstrate definite benefits to the community. The project sponsor proposes the following definite benefits. Improvement to traffic by moving the site access points further away from the intersection of Joy Road and Canton Center Road. Restriping Joy Road east of Canton Center Road to increase left turn stacking, limiting left turn movements to and from the site on Canton Center Road during peak school hours, construction of amenity seating adjacent to the public sidewalk at the intersection of Joy Road and Canton Center Road, and maintaining over 25% of the site as open space. Additionally, the plans propose a crosswalk and receiving ramps across Joy Road on both sides. Um, Director Smith, do you have anything to add? And this is also the one that uh, Patrick is gonna describe, correct? Um, yes, Patrick's on to answer questions. I know the um, petitioner is on, uh, Jared, and then also they did want to go through a short presentation with the board um, that I actually have um, ready for your viewing pleasure. Okay, um, Clerk Seeger, should we promote the petitioner? It's uh, Jared Keim. Oh, okay. I see him over there. I have promoted Mr. Keim to panelist. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kime, do you have anything to add? There he is. Hi, Mr. Kime. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Uh, we also have with us tonight, uh, I believe Aaron Havens is here. Uh, we also have Adam Pugh, the project architect, and John Ackerman with Atwell. Um, I guess to start things off here, I think uh, you, you did a fantastic uh, job with the brief description of the, the project here, but if you want to, Jade, if you want to go ahead and roll the video that uh, we did, we put together a, uh, a fly through video for the site uh, showing what the uh, final product will look like rendered. Oh, and it's telling me that I cannot play the media. Why is that? Oh, allow me one moment to adjust the video settings, if I may. Uh, audio. Oh, I'm sorry. When you selected share screen, did you select, um, it's important at that point that you select, there's a checkbox for the audio you should allow for. Try that again. 
do you see oh, optimized screen for sharing for video clip correct and then once you've done that it should allow you My apologies, it is not playing. Well, if we have uh, if we have difficulty with that, that's that's fine. We can. Uh, I think uh, in the yep. the packet that you've seen uh, has some perspectives uh, taken from the the fly through video. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that we can get that to uh, to function properly here. But um, so the, the the project is located at the the southeast corner of Joy Road and Canton Center. Um, it, as stated, it's the existing UAW hall that we have there. And uh, we're proposing to, to uh, demolish that building and redevelop this parcel, this, uh, this key entry point into the township. It's a highly visible corner uh, being right there next to the, the school complex um, and, and redevelop this for the primary use for Havens Orthodontics, uh, who will occupy the, the upper floors with the lower levels of the, the building uh, for the, the use of a, uh, a village shopping type district, uh, local restaurants, coffee <laughs> shops, bagel shop type uh, restaurants that the patrons uh, of, of Havens Orthodontics, while they're, they're waiting for their, uh, you know, their, their child's braces to be done or, or uh, teeth to be cleaned uh, in the, the dentist office upstairs, they can stop down and get uh, a coffee or a bagel or a sandwich um, and just uh, utilize the the uh, the property for the uh, enhancement of the the township in this this entry into the gateway for the the township and uh, we're here to answer any questions uh, Adam if there's any questions on the architecture our our project architect is here who can can uh, answer any questions there and Patrick if you had any uh, any more that you wanted to share on the, the project from your overview, feel free. Patrick, did you have anything to add? Uh, nothing uh, more to add beyond what's in our written report. If the proposed plan development is approved by the Township Board, the next steps would be for the applicant to prepare a site plan and that site plan would be reviewed by both the planning commission and the township board. So this would be coming to the board again in the form of a site plan with many more of the fine details. Okay, thank you. Do we have any board questions or comments? I can't see everybody all at once, so I will scroll I, through. Just a I will stop share, there we go. So I stopped sharing. Um, if anybody wants to see anything else, I can throw it back up there and I do apologize about the video, Jared. No problem, that's okay. Any board questions or comments? No. Tanya? Yeah, I have a question. I don't know if it's, it will come in the future plan. So um, since there's a Montessori school on the east side, is there a plan to have a fence or something like that? Because the traffic is going to increase. There will be cars coming out of this structure, uh, you know, this uh, development in and out. So. Do you have anything like that planned? So we, we won't have a fence, but what we do reflect on the site plan on the east side of the property uh, is, is extra green space to develop a, a, a buffer and enhance the, the green space between the parking lot and the, the playground for the Montessori school. Okay, thank you. Um, Kate? Hi, um, thank you for the presentation. Um, the traffic study was not really able to be done because um, school is not in session, is, is that right? Uh, yes, uh, so at the, the time that this was uh, prepared was actually uh, back in the early summer when we were in the, the heat of the, the shutdown. Um, and so they weren't able to do a typical traffic study as we would normally do in the pre-COVID times um, and even, even now with, with so many people still working remotely, traffic patterns are not what they used to be. Um, so the traffic consultant coordinated with, um, with the township and with Wayne County 
to develop a, a method of using some of the historical data for the area to uh, develop the anticipated traffic patterns and impacts from the development. Okay, um, I guess, you know, I, I have kids that went to um, the high schools and I am familiar with the traffic when school's in session. Um, and so it, I, I really, I, I, mean, I don't know what we can do at this point because there's um, no sign of, you know, COVID going away. Um, and, but I really, I really am concerned about the traffic there um, and an increase in traffic is going to be, um, you know, it, it, it's not gonna help an already very, um, busy and um, sometimes unsafe situation because of our, our roads are so, um, you know, there there's only unique, two lane roads there. And so it's- Yeah, it is a unique intersection and, and we're, we're aware of that. Um, but the, the primary uses for the, the facility itself don't necessarily align with the peak times of the, the school outlet. You know, your, your peak times, if you were having a, a restaurant type use uh, within the facility would fall at your lunch or dinner hours, which does not coincide with the hours that school lets out. Um, the main the main point of conflict would be at the um, the morning rush hour period there, um, which is why we've restricted the left turn movements uh, into and out mm -hmm. of the development during those peak hour periods, so that you don't have the the traffic that's trying to cross the the traffic that is waiting to turn left at the light there. Uh, to go over to the school. So we do have um, some, some measures in place to, to reduce that impact. Uh, but again, the majority of the uses for the, the facility, even if we were to have a, a coffee shop or a bagel shop there, uh, the majority of the uses for the facility don't necessarily align with that, uh, that 7 to 8 a.m. traffic flow. Uh, you know, you might have a couple appointments with your orthodontics at the beginning um, but you don't have that, that heavy morning volume there, so. Okay, so I, I have to think that um, you may be underestimating the amount of kids that would be interested in grabbing a bagel <laughs> before school and teachers too. Um, but I, I will, um, th you know, I, that aside, I, I would like to um, talk a little bit about um, what you're doing on Joy Road, because it is a very weird intersection with Canton Center Road kind of taking a jog there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I find um, when I'm at that intersection that it's difficult to know where to stop for the light if you're going west on Joy. Mm -hmm. um, and so will that be addressed at all? Because yeah, yes. Joy, it's like there's two different places you could stop because of the way Canton right, Center Road yeah, is the, configured. The existing striping up there it is very faded. It's not <coughs> uh, not very obvious. And, and part of our improvements would be to restripe that whole uh, section of the intersection on Joy Road, extending the length of the left turn lane. And uh, the existing road itself actually has enough width as you move uh, further east to just extend the striping out. So we're gonna be restriping. Basically, I think it starts all the way over in front of the Montessori school and restriping all the way up through the intersection. So all of the demarcations are very clear. Okay, thank you. Um, Steven, I think I'd seen your hand also. Yes, thank you. Um, Good questions. Um, I just wanted to actually ask Trustee Borninski now that she mentioned all that, what time does school start these days? Yeah, eight, eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, for virtual, so it's, it's eight o'clock. For virtual, now if uh, yeah, not we go virtual. back into school, um, that could change. I know that um, the board is trying, the school board is trying to make sure that we can, um, because I'm still on school board for another month, <laughs> we can um, try to to make it later because that's better for kids, um, better for their sleep patterns. But um, 
it, you know, it's, it's a complex issue with the busing and um, the three tiers of transportation. So when, make it difficult. School, when school was last in pre-COVID, pre it was at what time? 7.15 still or whatever? 7.10. 7.10. Seven ten, okay. So seven ten, I got gotcha. you. But if it's eight o'clock, that would give even more opportunity if it's pushed later for kids to start going to this location um, yes. before school. Seven ten, maybe not so much. Um, I did see um, Mr. Keim. I'm sorry, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yep, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, that you're on the Joy Road side, it looks like the driveway will be further to the east. Yes, the, there and the current there. driveway sits on just that corner parcel. We are actually combining the yeah. two parcels there. And so we're able to move the driveways further from that intersection to help with that traffic flow. <clears throat> okay, it looks like a great building. I'm all for other options of, of things to, to, um, places to go to um, get refreshments. Um, yeah, I, I am concerned about <laughs> those, not only for the students, but also for other customers, um, you know, clients of the, um, of the uh, businesses that are going to be there that, especially if they have appointments during those times, I'm sure you all are gonna have to be mindful of that. Um, even in the afternoon when when school lets out at whatever time it, it will be after when the world comes back to normal. The last thing I'll mention is I noticed that um, the height of the building, um, Patrick, was that a variance we had to do for the height or what mechanism did we use because it's taller than what is zoned right now? That's correct. The height is uh, five feet higher. Uh, so the minimum or the maximum height in the underlying zoning district is 30 feet and the proposed height is 35 feet. And uh, what this is, is a proposed modification uh, to the zoning ordinance. So on uh, page two of the uh, report, there's a bullet point list of uh, five different modifications that the applicant is seeking. And that, uh, that height modification is one of those. Okay, thank you. Any other board questions or comments? So if I may just have a question, are you allowing outdoor seating also? So what you see there as far as the outdoor seating, uh, it, it is only up on the, the second floor and it's more of a, an indoor outdoor uh, patio waiting uh, break area um, as, as you're waiting to have your, your teeth cleaned or your braces tightened, um, just creating that indoor outdoor uh, natural feel there so that uh, you can sit there and enjoy yourself uh, and the experience while you're um, there for your service. So it's, it's, not, it's not an area for, uh, for patrons of the lower level um, commercial area. It is only up uh, accessible through the uh, tenants on the upper floor. Was there a reason that you wouldn't have outdoor seating for the first floor commercial areas? Uh, lack of space is, is one of them. Um, in order to to create a an outdoor uh, seating area in front of the the individual units, it would end, it would uh, severely impact the the parking for the site, and we had to go through uh, a number of rounds of conversations with the the fire department to uh, determine the appropriate location for the aerial apparatus access drive, um, which is where we uh, ended up with the, the site plan as you see today. It has to be uh, within uh, 15 to 30 feet of the building. So in order to accommodate that, we would lose the entire uh, first row of parking up against the building. Um, are there any other board questions or comments? Tanya? Yeah, I have a follow-up question for Mr. Sloan for the modifications that they have asked for. Um, has this been done in other, you know, 
um, buildings before, like, are, are these normal? Because I am very new to the planning. So I have a question on that. Has this been done before? <clears throat> sure, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, this uh, type, these types of modifications have been done before, and um, the application that is uh, before the board, it's called a, a plan development, and um, site plans, sometimes they come in a number of different ways, and sometimes it's a site plan where someone is just asking to approve a plan that mostly complies with everything in the ordinance, but it nevertheless requires review by the Planning Commission and the Township Board. A plan development is a little bit different where an applicant doesn't necessarily have to comply with all of the dimensional standards of the zoning ordinance, but if they do want a modification from those standards, they have to do several things. The first is they have to prepare a plan development agreement, which is a legal agreement that um, would codify those modifications as well as propose definite benefits that make the project better for the site and for the greater community. And in addition to that, the applicant is required to propose a, a plan development plan, which is what we're reviewing this evening, that shows elements of the site that they're proposing as being superior to the minimum zoning ordinance standards. So the uh, modifications and the definite benefits are taken hand in hand when it comes to looking at a plan development application. And I'll be happy to take any other uh, questions or any follow-ups on uh, this uh, application or plan developments in general. Thank you. Hey. Sorry, I um, thought of something else that I was wondering about. Um, with the sidewalks, I note that um, there's plans to propose a, a crosswalk and receiving ramps across Joy Road on both sides. Um, is, has there been any thought of doing that to Canton Center, um, specific, specifically on the south side? So on, on Canton Center, there's already an existing crosswalk at the intersection there, even though it may not be well striped. Um, but there's also an existing crosswalk, which you can't see. Um, going north across Joy Road on the east side of the intersection there. There is a, a push button uh, signal in place on the north side, but there's no sidewalk receiving ramp there. It's just kind of a dirt patch right now. Um, and so with our sidewalk improvements that we're, we're redoing, we're gonna restripe that and provide a concrete landing on both the north and south sides of Joy Road there so that you can have a proper crosswalk uh, identified. Will you be restriping the crosswalk across Canton Center on uh, that south side? We will be restriping any part of that intersection that is, is necessary uh, with the review from Wayne County. Okay, because I can imagine that there will be, um, you know, kids wanting to go over there and get their bagels or coffee or whatever. Or braces tightened that also, because they already are doing that going north <laughs> across the street. Any other board questions or comments? Okay, uh, any attendees? Not seeing none. Yes, I'd like to do a, a point of information. So typically, in, at least in the past, and in, in, in line with Robert's Rules of Order, we've always, done public comment or attendee comment prior uh, to board comment. And the initial reason is um, as a deliberative body, um, it allows the participants to voice an opinion, the board to factor that opinion in, and then be free to make comment afterward. Um, you know, in the past, sometimes board comments get picked apart uh, after uh, by public comments. So um, would that be something we would do going forward where we would have public comment prior to board comment? Yes, yes, point taken, thank you. Okay. Well, I don't see any, any other board comments. So Clerk Segrist, can you please take a roll to pass, roll call to pass the motion? All right, um, Borninski. Hi. Foster. Aye. Graham Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Sigrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. 
Aye. Motion passes. Um, item G13, consider approval of the Meadows of Cherry Hill preliminary site plan. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Approval of the preliminary site plan for the Meadows of Cherry Hill. Whereas project sponsors requested approval of the preliminary site plan for the Meadows of Cherry Hill on property located on the west side of Ridge Road between Salts Road and ITC Corridor. And whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the preliminary site plan of the Meadows of Cherry Hill and voted 6-0 to recommend approval of the requests as it meets the design requirements of the zoning ordinance and condominium ordinance and is consistent with the plan development agreement for the Meadows of Cherry Hill. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, does hereby approve the preliminary site plan for the Meadows of Cherry Hill and the tax parcel numbers listed as proposed in the planning documents, subject to all applicable state and local development regulations, which include showing the uh, required corrections to sheet three on, and the required details for landscaping, lighting, and signage on the final site plan. Thank you. The applicant proposes to locate 38 single family residential site condominiums on the approximately 15.8 acres located on the west side of Ridge Road between Salts Road and the ITC corridor. The project density of 2.41 residential units per acre is less than the maximum density of four units per acre permitted in the village edge area of the Cherry Hill Village Overlay District. One entrance is proposed on Ridge Road and a connection to West Ridge Estates of Canton to the west is proposed via an extension of Hesperus Drive. The project sponsor proposes to maintain 33.9% of the site, which is 5.35 acres, as open space preserve trees along the existing water course and preserve existing trees around the perimeter of the site. The preliminary site plan is based on an approved plan development, which the Town board, Township Board of Trustees approved on August 25th, 2020. Since PD approval, there have been minor changes to the pond and orientation of some of the lots on the west side of the development. These changes have decreased some of the lot areas but increase the open space from 32.3% to 33.9% and increase the drain buffer from the rear yards of the lots on the east side of Bellwood Lane. Uh, Director Smith, do you have anything to add? Uh, nothing unless there's any sort of questions. Do we have a project sponsor here? Um, I don't know if they are on or not. Um, they are. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. Um, they are on. We promote John Goldman and Evan Priest. Kirk Seegers, please. Okay, thank you. Mr. Goldman. Done. Hello, Mr. Goldman and Mr. Priest. <coughs> Did you have anything to add, Mr. Goldman or Mr. Priest? They're muted. We are Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I can't hear you. Um... Hmm. Can, we can you hear us now? Yeah, I can actually. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do, you about that. Do you have anything to add? Uh, well, first off, I just want to say um, welcome to the new members of the board. Uh, my name is John Goldman. I'm uh, uh, with uh, my my building company is Evergreen Homes. My development company is North Star Development. Um, I have been uh, building uh, in Canton Township for over 20 years, uh, developing for a little bit less time than that, um, more like uh, 10 years. Um, but I do have a lot of experience in the township and have uh, an excellent reputation building homes here. I'm a local uh, smaller builder. We build about 15 homes a year um, and uh, have a lot of uh, very happy customers. So I'm, I'm pretty well familiar with the township process and happy to be here and answer any questions regarding this new project, which I think uh, in general, everybody is probably looking forward to having this kind of last phase of Cherry Hill Village or, or one of the last few um, be, um, be, be developed and, and go forward. 
Okay, thank you. Do we have any um, public comments or questions? Actually, we have Sharonda, who's the only one left. Um, do we have any board questions or comments? Summer. I just want to note my concern about, um, I know that reading through the, the minutes from the Planning Commission meeting, it was brought up about the lack of a traffic light at Salt, Stenton and Ridge. And I know that there have been quite a few accidents um, at that intersection. So I'm just wondering if there's an update on if Wayne County is planning to do a traffic light um, or any um, status updates on that. So, I can give a, a quick update that I know it was a the the, um, the study and it is warranted. Um, I do not have a time frame for you though that they were going to um, install that light. Um, I will look into that though and send that out to the board um, as soon as I get an answer from Wayne County. But I know that was talked about and there was um, that study was done prior to uh, the pandemic and since then I think it's it's somewhat fallen off the radar. But I will follow up with that and see where we are in the process. Yeah, I remember having those conversations in the roads meetings. I just hadn't heard anything about it recently. Yes, and I and I do know when they do approve those and they do the studies, they do the study. It's warranted. Then they go look for the the funding, um, and I believe that they actually found the funding, and then it goes into the queue um, as far as you know timing process. And I think that usually takes a, a year or two for them to get um, installed. Very similar to the one at the corner of Michigan and back. That took a few years. Um, after the study was warranted. So I will um, I will get a better timeline for you and, and send that out. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other board questions or comments? Kate? Hi, um, I wanted to ask about the um, the proposed road crossing over the, the Little Creek, I think it was. Um, it says that the applicant must obtain state and or county approvals for the proposed road crossing over the water course. Um, has that taken place yet or have they applied or are they waiting until we give approval? I probably would defer to Evan on that since he's my engineer. So hopefully he's uh, listening in at this point. Yeah, I'm here. Um, that is, uh, we, we will need a uh, permit from Eagle, formerly the DEQ, to cross that uh, water course. I don't believe it's a county drain, so I don't think they'll have anything to do with it, actually. If it was, there would be, we would have to get a permit from both of them, actually. Uh, the county will be reviewing the stormwater for the entire development. Uh, that process will start after we get past the uh, Hopefully, if we get past this meeting, then we can get to working on permit drawings for those sorts of things. Okay, and it, it just to clarify where that is on the on the map, it's the little stream, sort of the northeast corner. Is that right? Yeah, it would be between like uh, lots two and six. That helps. I'm just trying to get to <laughs> that part of my, yeah. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, and so what what's gonna happen there is they're gonna be like a big culvert or a, I don't even know the right terminology, but like a, one of those big um, pipes for lack yeah, of a better it, word. <laughs> it'll be like an arch it'll be very similar if that might even be the same size as the one that if you were to go upstream in the uh toll brothers development west of this project they have a crossing of the same uh, water course it'll be very similar to that okay thank you thank you Stephen. i think i saw your hand yeah th thank you um thank you for the changes that you made that added green space, first of all. Um, uh, I think last time when you were here, we talked about, um, and it's not any, disappointing, any disappointment with you as a developer um, or Mr. Priest as an engineer, it's more with Canton Township in terms of how it created the village back in the day. Um, and so I would ask Mr. Sloan to comment a bit 
um, again, on the fact that this is part of the village and yet there's no real sidewalk access to the main part of the village from this part of the village. And there in the plan, um, when, when it was created for the village, um, some uh, potential sidewalk access from this area down into the center of the village. And, and if not, if you don't have the answer now, can, can you take a look at that and research it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you're correct that this property is on the north side of Cherry Hill Village. And uh, on the north side, uh, there are some long established homes that, uh, that remain. And um, as, as they remain, a lot of times there's not um, a, a cause to do the sidewalk there. Uh, whereas across the street from this development, there's the landings, uh, which is a single family residential development that's relatively recent. And that development had done the sidewalk in front of its road. So a lot of these sidewalks are done once the developments come in. And um, north of the ITC corridor, which is just south of this property, as well as in the ITC corridor itself, those sidewalks have not yet been developed. So uh, that does create some gaps there, uh, especially as properties to the north get developed. And so what we have are properties to the north that are getting developed with sidewalks, and then the village itself has sidewalks that, that creates a gap. And those gaps become a little bit higher priority as those sidewalks get built out farther away from it. Uh, but so that is something that uh, we are looking at in terms of uh, our, our regional issue with, with our sidewalk system. Clerk Segrist. Um, I want to. Okay, oh, yeah. Also, oh, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. I had a few more questions, if you don't sure. mind. Sure. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so, with that in mind, and thank you, Mr. Sloan, um, I, I, I understand that this also will be looked at by the sidewalk program, and that's great. Um, the, the, the green space in here looks to mostly be in the front of the sub, I'm trying to find it, and around the retention pond, is, is there any others that I'm missing? And I have a follow-up question for that. Uh, sure. Um, the, uh, the open space is uh, anywhere on the interior of the site, and that's how the zoning ordinance defines the open space. And so much of that open space is, um, like you had mentioned, around the uh, frontage of the, the main road and, and some of the perimeter. Uh, but it's also along the, uh, the creek as well. It's the creek itself as well as the buffer from the creek that they're proposing additional trees in. So they pick up a lot of green space there as well as around and in the uh, perimeter of the pond. I would like to um, see um it some i would like to have a look at whether it makes sense to provide some kind of kind of um a paved road around the access pond similar to what they have in the subdivision that is west of ridge and south of cherry hill um it makes it makes that area much more usable and and there was also that access road or that skinny piece of land back out to Ridge Road that potentially someday could also provide pathway out to Ridge Road. Um, any thoughts on that? I, I could probably jump in and just make a quick comment. I think we, you know, when we addressed this back in uh, August on the 25th, I think the issue with that pathway off of Ridge Road uh, the, the, the neighbors on either side had a lot of concern with that. Um, originally, there, there was going to be a pathway there, and we had a lot of pushback uh, from the neighbors on either side for uh, a host of reasons, but mainly because of uh, security reasons and things like that. We were happy to put it in, but it kind of, it kind of got um, shot down by, by those folks. So we took it out and, and that really didn't give us a lot of pathway access. It, and, and, you know, when the board went ahead and, and, and approved it 7-2, I know maybe not everybody was super thrilled, but uh, unfortunately we just listened to what those folks on either side um, did say. 
Um, and we worked with them. You know, I think I'd mentioned there were some floodplain issues and things like that. And we did go above and beyond and, and we satisfied some of those issues. But that pathway that, that, that we were supposed to put in came out mainly because of the folks on either side of it. Can I speak a little bit on that too, please? Uh, regarding the path around the pond, the county has a buffer around the pond in which they wouldn't, to my knowledge, allow you to pave a path within 25 feet of the top of the pond. I'm not sure where the pond uh, Mr. Steinman's talking about was, but maybe it predate, predates that uh, particular ordinance. Or I don't know, maybe there's something I'm missing. But I don't think they would allow us Thank to put a path you know. 25 feet at the top of that pond. Um, thank you, Mr. Priest. I'll, I'll ask Mr. Sloan if he can research that as well. But um, it's the subdivision that's west of the um, the uh, uh, village factory. So and and they have um, they do have um, paths around their ponds that sort of gives you access to with a little easier. You can ride your bike around the pond, that kind of thing. Um, so, I, but I won't belabor the point. I guess I understand where you're all coming from. Um, it's just. I, I still feel a little bit of disappointment that we can't connect this area down into the village via some kind of path or sidewalk, either through ITC corridor. If it's gonna be part of the village, I really want it to feel like part of the village. Um, but, you know, maybe we can address it over time. And Mr. Sloan, if there's anything you can follow up to um, look at the original documents, maybe those uh, single homes were supposed to at some point um, sell to developers and, and that's what they were thinking. I don't know, but um, that that's my only point. And I appreciate all your input. That's all the questions I have, Madam Supervisor. Thank you, Michael, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I thank you, um, Madam Supervisor. I would just ask, I wanted to do a follow up on the, um, the, the private residences because I know in the heart of the village district, right on the south side of Cherry Hill, um, across from the theater and uh, Maraschino's pub and, and just that uptown development there, there are, I believe, five or six um, residences that are all, that all do have um, a sidewalk in front of them. And I believe one of those um, is a home that is not, like currently in use, it's kind of fallen into some disrepair. Um, so when I do see um, those properties having the, um, the sidewalk attached to them, obviously that would have been a priority, probably because you wanted walkability in the town center there. And maybe that's why we, we haven't um, pushed for the sidewalks on the the you know five or six residents Residence. to the north um and i do see obviously that the itc is still not um connected and that's on both sides that's on both denton road and ridge road the the sidewalk kind of ends with that development that was referenced earlier across the street, it ends at the property line of the ITC corridor. And it, believe it or not, um, closes off the dog park from, uh, have individuals from that, um, that subdivision there or the subdivision that was developed or is being developed across from Denton Road, those individuals can't travel to the dog park. Um, and I noticed that our property right there the dog park itself does not have sidewalk in front of it as well. So if we're going to talk about, if we're talking about closing gaps, I imagine at some point we should talk about uh, places where property we own fronts streets that's not been, does not have a, a sidewalk in front of. But, um, but yeah, so I guess, yeah, my question, my question is, is, is Obviously, from a historical standpoint, I don't know if um, Director Smith or um, or if uh, Planner Sloan would have a, an idea as to why the private residences on Cherry Hill Road are all connected with sidewalk, while um, these kind of remain disconnected. But um, 
I do think it should be a priority of this board going forward that we make sure we have sidewalk in front of our property um, and then try to assist in acquiring um, <laughs> to allow for sidewalk in front of these principal residences that are on major thoroughfares. Yeah, I can speak to that if you don't mind. Um, the thing one is I want to go back to the, the access out to Ridge Road. It, it, just to refresh everybody's memory, there was a lot of public comment in regards to this development at both the Planning Commission and I believe right after uh, the pandemic uh, struck, there was a lot of um, emails that were sent to the board and to the previous supervisor in regards to that access out to Ridge. So the, Mr. Goldman had presented it and um, it was taken back out because of the influence of the residents that were um, on either side. So I wanted to say that. And then in regards to the pond, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Sloan and myself, we can look into that pond um, and, and do some, get some more answers um, and look at some of the specifics around that pond. And then in regards to the gap, I don't want to get too far away from the agenda item that we're actually talking about, but right. one of the items that uh, Seagrass just brought up and I know is going to be a priority and um, Mr. Sloan and myself have already talked about is separating the gap program from the sidewalk program and creating much more emphasis on and targeting gaps. Um, a lot of these private properties that have been owned for many, many years, the right-of-ways were just never acquired. So um, putting an extra effort from the township's perspective in acquiring these in these key areas. And this is a particular, th this example here is one of them um, where I think that's it's appropriate for us to uh, to look at really making an effort to acquire those those easements to get those sidewalks. But and there's some other areas throughout the township. So putting together a, a very complex gap program um, is, I think, something that should be probably handled so, somewhat differently than the sidewalk program itself. And I'm I, I that has been something that I've talked about with my staff for quite some time and trying to get. Uh, Get my arms around that in my short time I've been here. Any other board questions or comments? Um, Tanya? Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I want agree with Stephen about the, like, you know, the walk uh, pavement around the pond because I have seen it in the neighborhood that he's talking about and there's a lot of traffic and people really um, enjoy that. So if in the future, uh, if there's there can be made if there can be any modifications made, I would really like to see that. Um, that way we can have more um, bike paths and walking paths, and really give it the Cherry Hill Village feel. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So I just want to add that I was on the planning commission at the time, and as you were. Um, Director Smith was also speaking of is there were a lot of residents. There is already a dirt path there. So it's kind of like an unofficial path, but I believe that they really, the residents had an issue with us making it a more formal path, basically drawing more pedestrian traffic through there. So that's, that's something that we did get a lot of comment on. Okay, any other comments or questions? Clerk Seegers, can you please call a roll call for the motion? Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Seegers, aye. Slavens. Aye. Schneiderman. Aye. Motion passes. Item G14. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you. you. Consider approval of an agreement with Wayne County to provide winter maintenance on eight miles, which is 15.65 lane miles of country road, sorry, county roads. Madam Supervisor, I move. Sorry, my uh, PDF is reformatting and drops it down to 25%. Uh-oh. Um, this happens sometimes. All right. 
And Supervisor, I move to approve the agreement with Wayne County to provide additional winter maintenance for eight miles, 15.65 lane miles of county local roads and authorize the payment of $19,993.97 from the account number listed, engineering right-of-way maintenance, professional and contractual services, and authorize the township clerk to sign the agreement resolution on behalf of Canton Township. Support. Under this agreement, the county crews will provide the same level of winter service on this additional eight miles, 15.65 lane miles, of local paved road as it presently provides on the primary paved roads if the township will partially reimburse the county for this added service. The township share of this cost for the 2021 winter season is $19,993.97 or $1,277.57 per lane mile. This cost is based on last year's cost and is how we have historically agreed to determine the pricing for these services. It represents 50% of the cost for county forces to perform the service. Uh, do you want to add anything, Director Smith? Um, probably just a little bit, because I'm sure there might be some questions, because this is probably new to, to a, a few people. But um, the county obviously maintains all of the, the roads within the township, and they categorize the roads into local roads and um, major roads. These sections, these roads that are listed here are actually on their local road um, list. So when they go out and they plow, it falls to the bottom of the list as far as a priority goes. So historically, and you can see in the packet, it goes back to 2004, there's been the cost that the township has paid to the county for the maintenance of this, these particular, <coughs> um, as they then treat them, they, put, they, they increase their priority so they do plow them. Um, last winter was my first winter with the township and I can tell you that um, this is something that I I did question, it was a little bit new to me, and we did go out and we did verify that these roads are maintained um, at the same level as our major roads are. Okay, thank you. Any mm -hmm. board comment or questions? Okay. So um, the, the parts of, we're just talking about sections of roads and what i'm wondering is um is it just those sections of the of those particular roads like for example cherry hill west county line to ridge is that 0.39 miles of cherry hill there designated as the local road and then the um the rest of cherry hill is not it's it's a primary road is that correct that is correct and it all has to do with uh, traffic counts and how that's um, categorized with the state and then how it's how there's road funding that that uh, trickles down from the state to the county for the maintenance of those roads so yes the remainder of cherry hill is a is absolutely a major road and that portion is actually considered just the local okay thank you mm -hmm. any other board comments or questions Okay, Clerk Segers, can you please do a roll call for to pass the motion? Morninsky. Aye. Graham uh, Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudek. Aye. Segers, aye. Slavens. Aye. Spenderman. Aye. Okay, motion passes. So we will now go into closed session. Um, so I would just to let, remind everybody there's another phone number for the closed session. So we will have to shut this off, go to the closed session, come back to adjourn. So do I hear a motion to move into closed session to discuss pending litigation with Marinelli versus Canton and Boylan versus Camp? So moved. Second. Okay, Clerk Segers, can we please get a roll call to move into closed session? Ornanski? Aye. Foster? Aye. Ganguly? Aye. Graham Hudek? Aye. Segers, aye. Snyderman? Slavens. I oh, forgot Diane. Slavens. I, know, I, I mess it up aye. sometimes. Slate. Aye. Okay, Snyderman. Aye. 
All right. Okay, so I will see you all over in the other meeting. <laughs> and we will come back to this after. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Motion to move back into regular or? support. Okay, so do Clerk Seegers, can you please take roll so we can move back into open session? Korninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Inguli. Aye. Gramhudek. Aye. Seegers, aye. Slavens. You're on mute. <laughs> I assume you said aye. I did. Aye. Snydeman? Aye. Okay. Um, do we have, now that ends our agenda for tonight. Do we have any further public comment? And we have zero attendees right now. Probably a no. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good no. Um, do we have any final statements from our board or directors? Diane? Yeah, I, I just want to make a quick comment um, to Director Trumbull and her IT team. They've been really working hard um, since we've closed uh, Township to the public. Um, they've been working 10 hour days to get staff ready for uh, bringing laptops and phones and everything home. So we really appreciate that all that you and your team have done. So thank you very much. And Thanks, then, Diane. Sure. And then I also want to congratulate the new board. Um, this is the start of a, a great term. And then lastly, I just wanted to, any residents that are going to be watching this, I, I want the, to let them know, even though Township Hall is closed, um, we're answering phones, we're still processing bills and and paying bills. Um, if they have water bills or once taxes start, they can put them in the drop box, which is right outside of Township Hall. Um, it, it goes into our vault, so it's in a secure place. Um, we're working during the day, Monday through Friday, so we'll take the bills out and process them. Um, so I don't want people to worry. We've had a lot of phone calls about not being able to come in uh, to pay their bills, but they can either mail them or drop them off. If they want a receipt, just put a note on it. We'll stamp it and mail them their receipt. Um, but the Dropbox is very secure and, um, and we're more than happy to send receipts if they'd like a receipt stamped. Thank you. Anyone else? Kate? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to my fellow board members for your patience with uh, my uh, questions tonight and um, my newness to pr the procedures with the township board. And I also wanted to wish everyone happy Thanksgiving, um, both my fellow board members, um, administration, and also the public. So happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Anyone, Tanya? I, I wanted to thank everybody for being patient with my questions for the for my first meeting um, um, as a public servant. So, um, and I also wanted uh, to wish everyone a uh, happy Thanksgiving. And, um, uh, hopefully we can meet in person in the new year. Thank you. Anyone else? Michael? I want to congratulate the uh, newly elected supervisor on conducting a phenomenal board meeting and a very, a very lively board meeting with a lot of content, a lot of changes. Um, you know, we, we kind of ran the, we did like the trifecta there. We had a closed session. We added a, a resolution at the last minute. We had an add on RBA, so that was pretty good. Um, so you did fantastic, the two new board members. Welcome aboard. Um, some great questions tonight. I do want to echo the treasurer's statements about finance and IT. As I was leaving the office at 6.30 yesterday, I did see the light on on the third floor in IT. They were burning the midnight oil pretty pretty late. I know we're in budget time right now. And, and so that's, um, and then also the, Every virtual that is um, a big curveball 
um, but we're, we're handling it in stride. So um, I appreciate, I appreciate that. I appreciate um, the uh, town, the treasury department water billing. I paid my water bill today on the internet, which was Good fantastic. Job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Diane appreciates that. <laughs> Get that money coming in. Um, and, um, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was great. It was painless. So, um, so that was, that was great to do. Um, the election was certified yesterday by the board of state canvassers. So, uh, the, uh, election that feels like it started 17 years ago has finally come to a, to an end. So mm -hmm. extremely grateful for that. Uh, very grateful to the public. Uh, for the support, the organization for the support. I don't think we would have been uh, successful at, at all without without you all. So um, I appreciate that. And I do want to wish everybody both a happy Thanksgiving and also a happy uh, Native American Heritage Month. Um, I think it's extremely important that, that we did that uh, this month, especially uh, too often when we tell the story of Canton we, we talk about it like it started in 1835, and it didn't. Um, people have been in this uh, community for much longer. Um, the history goes back much longer. And um, this board played a role in making sure we expanded who, who we talk about and when we talk about our heritage and our tradition. So I, I appreciate that very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll just add happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Anyone else? I just okay. real quick, uh, Supervisor, just a reminder to everybody that next Tuesday night, even though it's not our traditional tree lighting, we are having a virtual tree lighting for the community next Tuesday night. So please tune into that. Oh, yes. Oh, and the walk. I'm so excited about the walk on the golf course uh, for uh, the tree, for the lighting. That's going to be fantastic. So awesome job leisure services on that. Sorry, I just stole some time. I'm out of order, I know, but I got excited about that. I need my gavel. <laughs> That's right, I have a gavel. Um, actually, and I just want to echo what everybody said. You know, thank you, uh, Wendy to you and IT for helping get our employees home safe and to work and support the township, you know, remotely. And that's great. And also to Clerk Segrist, I mean, this is really the first time we've been able to talk about it. I mean, you really handled a monumental election that is unprecedented with over 40,000 absentee ballots. I mean, you really brought it home and you did a great job and really solid job. So I mean, that we haven't talked about it, but it just finally ended yesterday with the last certification. So congratulations. They didn't come after Canton. They knew it was solid. <laughs> good job. Good job. I, wish um, I, could take all the credit. I know. Yes. Thank you to all your helpers. Thank you. And thank you to the new board for everything you've done tonight. And, you know, this is really exciting. We have a lot of good things coming forward, but I just wanted to add a couple of things, but just letting the residents know to continue to stay safe. As um, Director Stockline said earlier, our numbers are going up. So please continue to stay safe. When I drove down Ford Road the other day, um, I was just noticing, I, was, I sometimes I drive around town and just look at, and they all the um, drive-throughs were full. They were awful. People were taking out food um, in front of restaurants. Um, at Kroger's, people were lined up for people to bring their groceries out. But also remember that at the places where those people work, there are all a lot of young people too. So be patient with them because they're handling long lines. Um, also make sure to continue to support the businesses in, in Canton, which I did see when I was driving up and down Ford Road. And we also have a small challenge. So if residents get takeout or support a local store, we ask them to take a picture and post it online for others to see what they have. But also if anyone needs food, services, or supplies, and you're unable to get assistance, you can call 734-394-5400. And we have great volunteers that'll get you what you need. So keep looking out for your neighbors and each other and have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? Don't move. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Clerk Segrist, can you please take a roll call? And Orninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. 
Seagrest A, Slavens. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Stay safe. Good night. Hey.